Okay, now we're going to look at another selection tool, and that is the magic wand. And that flies out. If we click up here, it's the fourth tool down. You can see you have different tools here, and I'm choosing magic wand, and you have properties for this up here. Let me put this on single selection, and you have a tolerance. The tolerance is how strong uh, will your magic wand be when it grabs a range of colors. So let's take a look here. I'm going to go to the background layer and I'm going to turn the titles off for a second and clear everything off. Okay, and so we're just working on the background layer. I'm going to zoom in, command plus sign, and I'm going to select the beach. Now, if my tolerance for the magic wand was set to one and I clicked on a pixel. It grabs one pixel plus or minus any shade of that pixel that are connected together. If I set the magic wand to seven and I select, there we go, it grabs a much wider range. If I were to select it to say 32, I'm going to do select deselect to get rid of that selection and so now I have a clean selection and you notice it grabs almost the entire beach exclusively. Now you may have noticed that I had my setting on single selection, meaning if I click grass, it drops the old selection and then of the beach and goes to the new selection. If I click in the woods here, it drops what was there. Command D to deselect. The point of that is if you add to selection, why would you want this add to selection? Well, you notice when I clicked on the beach, there's some parts of the beach it didn't select like over here, this light beigey area. So if you have it on add to selection and you reduce, let's say you reduce your tolerance to let's say 14. And I only want to, and now I click on these lighter areas and maybe even here some over here. You see it, now you can go be a lot more precise and grab just the beach. And on top of that, if you say you use your let's switch from polygon to your lasso tool which is a freehand tool and we put add to selection on that you can then grab these dark stones that were missed over here so that's the point of add to selection here let's go along the beach shoreline here grab that little rock draw around and come back to your starting point let go and look it's adding to the selection same with that stone okay and so now we have just the beach selected. And uh, if I go to my image adjust levels, let's say, I could bring the, the darkness of the beach down. Just the beach. Now that can come in useful, come into play uh, later on. But I just wanted you to get an, on, an idea of the concept of how the magic wand works here with the tolerance levels. So right now we're going to work on that graphic with the laurels for the winner of a green film festival. So now we're going to go open our laurels file. I'm going to go file open. There we go. Now this should have been a PNG image. These little squares would indicate that it's a PNG but uh, when you're Google searching you could actually search for laurels, movie laurels PNG and usually you'll get images with invisible backgrounds but in this case there's little squares in there and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to select one of these leaves so I can get rid of those squares that's basically what I want to do I'm gonna click on one of the leaves now if I do select similar it's gonna grab all the leaves and anything else that's black but this I had set it into a kind of a lilac color just to show you that sometimes if you want to grab two different colors there's a simple way to do that as well let me deselect command D or you go to select deselect and now I'm gonna grab one leaf which is black one letter which is lilac and now I'm gonna say select similar and now it's selected everything and it ignored these little checkered squares so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to my poster and I'm gonna paste it and here it is it's way up here and let's do the same thing that we did before and I'm gonna turn off the backgrounds here so we can just see white and I'm working on this and name your layers remember that so let's call this laurels too because I think I already have one and I wanna make sure that I select 
the piece is on this layer. So the lilac and black again. And I'm going to say select similar to grab them all. And I'm going to color them. Now one way I can color them, I want it kind of to look like a goldish kind of color. So one way I could color it is I could set the foreground color here to kind of a, a yellowish orangey uh, tinge. And while everything's selected, I could hit hold my Alt key and hit backspace or delete and it fills that automatically fills with the foreground color or you can go to edit fill and it will fill the selected area with whatever color you choose foreground or background okay that's one way of doing it I'm gonna show you something else here let me deselect this and that is this tool here the gradient tool right now the foreground is yellowish orange and it goes to a lilac. Let's say I take the background color and I set it to an, a more orangey goldish shade. So now we have, make this one a little lighter. Okay. Now, if I take this tool and I draw from here to here, that will have a transition from the foreground to the background color in a very short distance. You see that? If I drag from here to here, it's a much smoother transition from one color to the other. Now remember, we're on our laurels layer, so when I did that, I erased the laurels. I'm going to go back here now and select one leaf and one letter in lilac, and then say select similar. So I grab, I'm grabbing everything in there. Now, you can only change whatever is selected. The outside cannot is protected. It's only what's selected that can be changed. So if I take this gradient tool and I click from here to this end, it does kind of, you see there's darker orange here and lighter orange over there, and it gives you kind of that gold effect that I was looking for. And now I'm going to deselect or command D. And now let's add an effect to this. I'm going to go to layer because remember I'm on the laurels layer. So anything I do is going to happen to that layer. And I go layer style. I'm going to choose bevel and emboss. I'm going to increase the depth of the bevel, make it a little deeper. I'm also going to add a stroke so that we can see more clearly the entire outline. And click OK. Take my move tool, hold my shift key and shrink it a bit. When I've got the size I want, hit enter or that little check mark in the upper right, and it'll go somewhere around there. Here, try and get it about the same size. And so that's how I did that. And if we turn our layers back on, you can see this one. I played with this one a little more and got it to kind of stand out a little more. I probably added a bigger shadow than the first one. So if I want to go back and change the effects on what I just did here, I can actually click on the effects button there. Let's say I go to stroke and I can increase the stroke on there and you see that? Now it really stands out. And the reason sometimes you need a shadow like that is because when you have a lot of colors happening in the background, beige sand, green grass, um, the lake, blue, kind of bluish green, well you, you sometimes all those colors interfere and prevent you from seeing. So I added a um, I added a shadow there. Let me double click that again in the layers. Click on shadow. It's a little heavy, so I can reduce the impact of that shadow. So it's a little more reasonable. And again, bring it down here, and it may show just a little more. And so that's how you can use your magic wand tool with the multiple uh, selection option and the tolerance for uh, um, selecting wider ranges of a given color and how you can add some layer effects to a graphic. So in the next phase we're going to start uh, using the text boxes and we're going to add uh, text effects, we're going to add effects to the text to make it kind of uh, stand out in the document.